Good morning, distinguished guests and friends. Welcome to the Spotlight on Cybersecurity Conference, the fifth event in the Solutions 2020 and Beyond Spotlight Series on cutting edge collaboration between Japan and the United States. Um, just a housekeeping note, um, we have interpretation, you have a channel sign, um, please use that um, as needed. Please note that today's event is on the record. And please silence your mobile phones and please do ask our staff at the registration desk and around if you need any assistance. We would like to recognize and thank some truly distinguished guests here today. The Honorable Takuya Hirai, member of the House of Representatives, will join the event later. Assistant Secretary of Commerce for Industry and Analysis, Marcus Jadot, U.S. Department of Commerce. Admiral Dennis Blair, Chairman and CEO, Sasakawa USA, and former Director of U.S. National Intelligence, will join us this morning for the keynote session. Dr. Jun Murai, Dean and Professor of Information Studies at Keio University. Dr. Satoru Tezuka, Executive Director, Cybersecurity Research Center at Keio University. And Dr. Hideki Sunahara, Director, Cybersecurity Research Center at Keio University. Thank you all for joining us today, and thank you to all of you, our distinguished and honored guests, for joining us today. Today's conference is part of the Department of Commerce Cybersecurity Business Development Mission to Japan, Korea, and Taiwan, led by Assistant Secretary of Commerce Marcus Jadot. We have 14 of the top U.S. cybersecurity companies with us today. I would like to take a moment to introduce them to you. Trade mission participants, could you please stand up when I call your name, your company name? Air Informatics. Bruce, uh, stand up. Carbon Black. Cisco Systems. Dark Trace. Data Locker. FireEye. Lockheed Martin. Palo Alto Networks. Raytheon. Schweitzer Engineering Laboratories. Security Innovation, Centec Global, Tanium, and UL. Thank you so much for standing up. When we have breaks and at the networking at the end of the day, I hope that all of you will have a chance to meet these great companies and exchange cards. I would like to thank the co-organizers of today's conference, Admiral Blair, Bud Roth, and Sasakawa USA, the Cybersecurity Research Center at Keio University and Dr. Tezuka, APEED, the Asia Pacific Institute for the Digital Economy, especially Dr. Foster and Omer Kazi. I would like to thank the sponsors of the Solutions 2020 Spotlight Series, Adobe, Comscope, Dow, and Qualcomm. Now we will continue our program. It is my honor to introduce and call to the podium United States Embassy in Japan, Deputy Chief of Mission, Jason Highland. Sir, thank you for joining us today. Good morning. Good morning. Deputy Director General Taniwaki, Commissioner Tezuka, Dr. Murai, Assistant Secretary of Commerce Jadot, Admiral Blair, honored guests, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak to you today on an issue of paramount importance for all of us. I would like to congratulate Keio University for its vision in establishing the Cybersecurity Research Center. Keio's leadership including Dr. Tezuka and Dr. Murai, recognize that cybersecurity is one of the great challenges of our time to national security, to business, and to the individual. The impressive attendance today reflects that more and more people 
every day share the same sense of urgency in confronting the very real threats we face. My thanks to the Cybersecurity Research Center, Sasakawa Peace Foundation USA, and Asia Pacific Institute for the Digital Economy for co-organizing today's conference with the U.S. Embassy Commercial Section and for their ongoing collaboration on the internet. I'm proud to be here today with the outstanding U.S. companies participating in the cybersecurity business development mission to Japan, Korea, and Taiwan. These companies are industry leaders and represent some of the leading cybersecurity technologies in the world. They work truly at the cutting edge. I hope that the participation of these excellent firms in this mission will lead to deep and mutually beneficial connections with Japanese business and government in ways that will make both our countries more secure and more prosperous. The topics that we must address on an urgent basis include protecting our intellectual property against ever more sophisticated attacks, even while we expand our essential cross-sector and cross-national collaborations in research and development, ensuring that the strongest possible technological protections and procedures are in pl place to keep our critical infrastructure secure. Welcoming the revolution of the Internet of Things in a way that integrates cyber protections from the very beginning. And learning from the example of other hosts of the Olympics, including London, in preparing adequate cybersecurity measures. Over the next few years alone, Tens of billions of objects will be connected to cyberspace. This is a daunting task from a security perspective. And one need only look at the number of cyber attacks registered during the London Olympics to appreciate the need for extensive preparations for 2020 Tokyo involving good communication among all stakeholders and the latest solutions. And 97% of Fortune 500 companies admit they have been hacked. So there's no question about the extent of the threat that we face. The United States is totally engaged on the issue of cybersecurity in terms of policy, technology, and international cooperation. President Obama is a leader in focusing on the criticality of this issue. The President has said, cybersecurity risks pose the most serious economic and national security challenges of the 21st century. The White House announced the Cybersecurity National Action Plan earlier this year. This plan commits resources to enhancing cybersecurity and established within the De Department of Commerce a new Commission on Enhancing national cybersecurity to bring together industry leaders and experts in the digital economy, cybersecurity, and other fields. I encourage attendees to read more about what we are doing and see how highly we value public-private partnerships in that complex effort. I also want to emphasize how vital public education is in reducing the threat. Cybersecurity was also an important topic of discussion at the G7 ICT ministerial meetings, and it will be on the agenda of the G7 summit. The United States and Japan, working together, can help build consensus and more international cooperation on important cybersecurity and digital economy issues. As trusted allies, and two of the world's most advanced economies, our cooperation can only bring benefits to our people and to the global community. I appreciate your commitment to finding solutions to make our lives better, more secure, 
and more prosperous as we embrace the exciting developments in the internet space, and I wish you every success. Your concern and interest are very well placed. We have to get this right. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Chief of Mission Highland, for your remarks and for joining us today. It is my honor to introduce and call to the podium Dr. June Murai, Dean and Professor of Information Studies at Keio University. Uh, good morning, uh, distinguished uh, participants on uh, this uh, very important event on the uh, uh, Spotlight on a Cybersecurity Conference. I uh, sincerely welcome all of you for uh, participation. Um, this uh, uh, cybersecurity uh, conference of uh, this kind, actually the uh, KU University honored to uh, host as a kind of a second uh, conference of uh, this kind. We had a, a very important uh, discussion in uh, uh, February 29th uh, this, this year and uh, also, uh, you know, um, the tremendous amount of uh, support from a uh, U.S. embassy and also U.K. embassy people uh, discussing uh, about the cybersecurity in general, but uh, especially focusing on uh, critical infrastructure, uh, preparing for the 2020 Olympic Paralympics, which is a, a very big issue on uh, for for Japan. Um, the uh, I'd like to uh, thank the uh, U.S. Embassy, as usual, uh, Jason. Uh, you've been you know, tremendously supporting in the entire group of the U.S. Embassy people uh, to uh, invite people and their leaders and the, uh, from the companies as well. Uh, so uh, that's a really important part, Sasakawa, uh, U.S. Uh, APID people and the other uh, sponsor, all the sponsors who are uh, making the other uh, very diversity of our people and the leaders of the cybersecurity area uh, getting together from the network uh, for the uh, working together for the future, which is a very important part. The, in Japan, uh, the, we've been uh, very much uh, synchronized uh, with the United States for the development of the internet itself. Uh, you know, the same, almost the same year, we started up uh, to work, uh, uh, developing work in the 80s. And in, during the 90s, then uh, we've been working together uh, for the uh, protocol standard definition and uh, working together for the uh, developing the global internet together. Actually, the first internet conference was held in Kobe 92. Uh, and uh, so uh, that's a uh, by the way, the population of the internet that time was the second two in the world. So US and Japan got the you know, number one and number two other population for the initial part of the internet. Therefore, the uh, tremendous uh, joint efforts on the developing and et cetera has been done. Um, the, in the 90s, uh, there was a developing community of the internet started to discuss very seriously about the design of the cybersecurity, security in it. So security by design type of a concept started in the uh, 90s. So uh, since then, uh, we've been working uh, kind of a leading law on the area. But uh, this morning, I'd like to uh, share uh, some of this sad uh, message. Uh, the Security, cybersecurity in Japan, internet security in Japan was uh, led by a single person called Suguru Yamaguchi. Uh, he's been uh, working with me for the, all the history of uh, uh, internet I've been working on. He passed away uh, on uh, May 9th, uh, just uh, 10 days ago. He was 52 years old, very young, and he's been uh, fighting uh, with the uh, uh, the, his uh, very serious disease for two, the past two years, but uh, before that, uh, he's been the leading. He's been uh, doing the leading law uh, about the, all the research of the cybersecurity area, 
internet security area, started up the JP CERT, which is a uh, Japan National CERT. And so he did uh, most of the work, uh, start working as a part of the government and just uh, helped start up the uh, you know, security agency uh, in the, inside the cabinet. And so uh, all the cybersecurity things you know about Japan are actually the initiated by himself. So uh, we miss uh, Suguri Yamaguchi very much. So I'd like to ask all of you uh, to share a moment uh, to recognize uh, his work. Okay. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, I think we have a very long day. And in the afternoon, we, we have a panel session and a you know, very uh, fruitful discussion, I hope. So uh, thank you very much again for the participating on the, this great event. Thank you, Dr. Murai, for your remarks and for joining us today. We will now begin with keynote remarks. It is my honor to introduce and call to the podium Assistant Secretary of Commerce Marcus Judat, who advises the Under Secretary and the Secretary of Commerce Penny Pritzker on trade and investment policy and issues impacting the global competitiveness of U.S. businesses. He heads the division that conducts research and analysis on manufacturing, services, travel and tourism, textiles and apparel, global trade, investment, and economic trends that impact the International Trade Administration's mission. Assistant Secretary Jadot, would you please come to the podium? Thank you, sir. Good morning. Uh, Deputy uh, Director General Takanaka, uh, distinguished guest, uh, DCM Highland, uh, members of the U.S cybersecurity mission. Thank you all for being here. Uh, it's a real pleasure for me to be uh, both a part of this uh, mission and uh, before you today to talk about some of the Department of Commerce's efforts to support the global digital economy and establish partnership with Japan to improve our bilateral relationship and, collabor and collaboration in digital trade and cybersecurity matters. The digital economy is transforming the world. In the United States, the internet economy is estimated to represent 5% of US GDP. In 2014, the United States exported nearly $400 billion worth of digitally enabled services, representing 55% of all US services exports. At the Department of Commerce, we are well aware of the importance of digital trade to our economy and the importance of cybersecurity to secure and support digital flows. Over the last few years, the U.S. government has been working on several multinational agreements to facilitate digital trade with partners, including Japan, on uh, agreements uh, that range from the Trans-Pacific Partnership, the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Cross-Border Privacy Rules, the EU-US Privacy Shield Framework, and the Trade and Services Agreement. The Trans-Pacific Partnership includes first-ever commitments that will promote a free and open digital economy and serve as a template for 21st century trade agreements going forward. This includes first ever commitments by parties to encourage cooperation on consumer protection, including cybersecurity and data privacy. The Trans-Pacific Partnership also includes commitments addressing trade barriers, such as server uh, location requirements, discriminatory treatments of and duties on digital products, and force disclosure of source codes, all aimed at advancing the digital economy. The U.S. Department of Commerce is also promoting the expansion 
of the cross-border privacy rules, otherwise known as CBPR, a system that facilitates cross-border data flows by allowing companies to satisfy the requirements of multiple regulatory regimes under a single certification system. As the system continues to grow, it will reduce the administrative burden on data transfers across APEC economies. Current members of the CBPR system include Japan, Canada, and the United States. And I'd like to take this opportunity to congratulate Japan on becoming a fully operational member of, C of the CBPR system. We're also grateful to Japan for its contribution and leadership in developing the CBPR. We look forward to continuing to work together to further develop the CBPR system across the APEC region and further establish the CBPR as an effective and secure mechanism to enable digital trade. Our goal is to double the current uh, member economies participating in CBPR by 2017. And by the end of this year, our goal is to add 100 new companies uh, to the CBPR. We're also working with our European partners. Just three months ago, the U.S. Department of Commerce reached an agreement with the European Commission on the EU-U.S. Privacy Shield Framework, which will enable companies to meet the EU's data protection requirements when transferring personal information to the United States. We're also working closely with our European partners to help restore trust in transatlantic da data transfers and provide the needed certainty for data flows between Europe and the US. My department is also currently negotiating a trade and services agreement, also known as TISA, with 22 other parties around the world, including Japan. Through this agreement, we're seeking to further facilitate trade in the digital economy and promote global innovation and entrepreneurship. Our aim is to build platforms and mechanisms required for the digital economy to thrive and flourish in a secure and effective manner. The role of cybersecurity technology and services is critical to ensuring these goals. The Department of Commerce is committed to supporting the digital economy and cybersecurity. For example, our uh, secretary, Penny Pritzker, recently announced the digital economy agenda for the Department of Commerce, which focuses on four main points. The first is promoting a free and open internet worldwide. The second, promoting trust online, allowing e-commerce to flourish based on a foundation of security and privacy. Third, ensuring access with fast broadband enabled economic growth. And finally, promoting innovation through smart intellectual property rules and advancing next generation technologies. Cybersecurity, cyberspace touches every aspect of our daily lives. Through the broadband beneath us and wireless signals all around us that enable networks that power our hospitals, schools, universities, and our entire nation. Overall, the Obama administration is pursuing five key priorities that will strengthen our approach to cybersecurity threats. The first is protecting our country's critical infrastructure, our most important information system th from cyber threats. The second, improving our ability to identify and report cyber incidents so that we can respond in a timely manner. Third, enabling our international partners, including Japan, to promote, engaging our international partners, including Japan, to promote internet freedom and build support for an open, interoperable, secure, and reliable cyberspace. Fourth, securing U.S. federal networks by setting clear targets and holding agencies accountable for meeting those targets. And finally, shaping a cyber-savvy workforce and moving beyond passwords into partnerships with the private sector. The U.S. Department of Commerce has a key role to play in each of those areas of focus. Cybersecurity is the foundation of a free and open internet, 
and the global digital economy. And this is an important part of our digital agenda. Over the next several days, I will be here in Tokyo and will also travel to Seoul and Taipei with our uh, group of uh, cybersecurity companies that are part of our mission. These companies are industry leaders and represent some of the best technology the U.S. and the world has to offer. And as DCM Highland noted, I would encourage you to take an opportunity to uh, meet with and work to establish relationships with the company representatives. I want to thank the Commercial Service again uh, and the U.S. Embassy here in Tokyo, along with Sasakawa Peace Foundation USA and the Cybersecurity Research Center here at Keio University for preparing such a great conference. It's remarkable to see such great participation uh, on a wet morning here in, in, in Tokyo. I look forward to learning more from our distinguished panelists and speakers, and uh, we'll join the group later in the day uh, for a session on the Internet of Things. Thank you again very much, and we appreciate your attendance. Thank you, Assistant Secretary Jadot, for your remarks and for joining us today. We will now begin our keynote panel, Measuring and Assessing the Cybersecurity Challenge. It is my honor to introduce and call to the stage Ms. Melissa Hathaway, Senior Advisor, Cybersecurity Project at the Belfer Center at Harvard University. Thank you, Melissa. We're going to have you all come up at the same time. I'm going to introduce you, Ms. Yuri Ito, Director of the Cyber Green Project and Director of Global Coordination at JP Cert CC. And our mod mod moderator, Ms. Angela McKay, Director, Cybersecurity Policy and Strategy at Microsoft. Angela, if you could take the podium, please. <laughs> 